reading from my book, A Philosophical Approach, theoretical, on Flatterland and Multiverse Theory. These are essays. Reading Flatterland by Ian Stewart, I encountered a chapter about dimensions, a topic on it that led to information about what dimensions are described as in physics has traditionally been three directions plus maybe time. With non-Euclidean math and algebra, it was possible for mathematicians to evolve the notion of extra dimensions. If one has a two-dimensional quad grid, one can use that square power of two notation. Eventually, one finds cube roots or third power and, I guess, extra higher dimensions, although I seem to recall something about Abelian algebra issues with some higher powers. Regular shapes from geometry can thus be described with natural and real numbers algebraically, although the product of such constructions can be fiction or consistent just in mathematics. Some physicists created the idea of dimensions as being a kind of set theory criteria apparently redefining what a dimension is. So any number of dimensions with what are in effect described as a given set might coexist within Hilbert space. Hilbert space is a given set as a given set might coexist. Hilbert space is a given area with four dimensions, inclusive of time, wherein any number of dimensions defined as behaviors, motions could exist. Nevertheless, the dimensions tend to all exist within the boundaries of Hilbert space rather than an alternate dim- universe is made of different dimensions of the other kind of definition. Maybe multiverse theory does not extend dimensions beyond real Hilbert space of necessity within the implicit construction of its math. However, I'm not a mathematician. Clever dimensional modeling remains simply theoretical constructs that physicists might infer something about reality with. Some regard space of the universe as expanding. Like upwelling ocean currents, nothingness is thought to upwell into pre-existing space, making ever more of nothing. Nothing times nothing equals nothing. The square root of minus one equivocates the reality of nothing. Maybe it is easier to regard nothing as omnipresent except where something is existing or made to exist. Rather than space expanding, it is the Higgs field expanding or maybe active in some other way. It might be some more primary field of the universe that is subject to change that gives rise to the appearance that space in itself, nothingness is expanding. The effects might be the same, although possibly not in present mathematical models. What description encompasses the entire universe of economic action? Multidimensional economic models would provide no finite and simultaneous, infinite, accurate set descriptions of actual states of affairs. Economics is a purpose, an antinomy to art, Yet the flip side of it, simul- uh, uh, yet the flip side of it, simultaneously, economics is a clump of precision engineering, of wishes to bring in a harvest of potatoes before the season's shadows grow long and frost descend upon the fields. It is a complete world of opportunities and ideas interacting with material, finite material, of which planets are made. Economics of Wall Street physics can construct external reality such that if the theoretical models don't crash immediately. They may crash later, after dimensional cosmonauts have extracted a suitable profit for sponsors. Uh, Refer to the 2008 crash. Dumbing down with man, dumbing down mankind with CO2. 13 March 2017. During the Precambrian era, 550 million years ago, that's when it ended. Atmospheric CO2 was as high as 7,000 parts per million. There wasn't much complex life on Earth then, and that ended with the Cambrian era explosion of life, with most of all the planet's major phyla developing then for a few decades. That life, growing, scrubbed much of the CO2 from the atmosphere because plants take in CO2 and release oxygen. CO2 was present for many natural and organic sources in a low-life environment. So mankind, in reducing plant ecospheric health, along with destruction of major elements of phyla, so far as they can, such as reducing wolves to uh, very low numbers, uh, can work toward a Precambrian Carboniferous way of being. Like those breathing auto and diesel exhaust occupationally, the effects of deoptimalizing creative intelligence may be less noticed by the victims. As CO2 increases, deniers that it's harmful become less able to comprehend the reduction in their own potential. 
there's a Wikipedia article on carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. During the Quaternary glaciation two million years ago, atmospheric CO2 was as low as 280 parts per million. Mankind developed into a, a modern form with large functioning brains for many or most people in that low CO2 era, increasing CO2 to 400 parts per million as present. With all of the pollution probably tends to dumb people down, as would putting a plastic bag over your head and rebreathing CO2. Uh, there's a Wikipedia article on the Cambrian explosion t- as well. Creative destruction of capitalism destroys the ecosphere too. 20 December 2016. Joseph Schumpeter is credited with coming, with coining the term creative destruction of capitalism in reference to the change of economic infrastructure from industrialism to post-industrial toolkit. That creative destruction has the side effect of destroying the planet's ecosphere as a byproduct of externality. Plainly stuffy capitalism as ecospheric vision defenders need to destroy their own ideas about what capitalism is and adapt to a post-trash the ecosphere new way of capitalism. Uh, there is a wiki- Wikipedia article on creative destruction. Environmental economics that are adapted to present national and global challenges require intelligent design of political parameters responsive to meeting the challenges to the synthesis of social economy and ecosphere. Capitalism in its present evolutionary form is demonstrably inadequate responsive to challenges of habitat loss, mass species extinction, global warming, oceanic pollution, and dislocation of economic and physical security of the citizens of the United States and world. In theory, Capitalism with intelligent design parameters established politically would better work to satisfy political and consumer needs. Mass media sycophants have concentrated wealth and power to get news feed from government and corporate releases, largely. Reiteration of ethics values of concentrated wealth from the bulk form the bulk of the political socialization of the masses and countering the mass media. Hence those values of evolutionary capitalism instead of capitalism under the direction of economic design, gathered together like a peloton in a distant spike race, riding through egospheric and economic eschaton, waiting to crash down upon them like a spring-loaded hyper-Maxwell's hammer. Plainly, one wonders if the Federal Reserve can print up money to buy U.S. bonds and issue zero-interest loans to large banks as a permanent feature of the U.S. economy without causing hyperinflation and devaluation of the value of the dollar. Of course, uh, consumer prices that uh, affect ordinary people, because ordinary people, 49% of uh, Americans live on less than one-third, I believe it is, uh, one-third of 1% of the national income. So it's possible that inflation can be confined to just the poor who are consumers in America. Which, which is unfair, but uh, it should include everyone, but it may not. Another potential problem is the large number of dollars held abroad. It could be 49 million people rather than 49%. I don't recall uh, the number. I'm not reading this now. Um, without causing hyperinflation and devaluation of the value of the dollar. Another potential problem is the large number of dollars held abroad in relation to the quantity held by Americans. Will Americans be able to afford to live in their own nation if they aren't part of the 1% in the future? Maybe they can live in tents. President Obama had nine major policy achievements in the six years. One, Obamacare for corporate power instead of expanded VA system network with homeless clinics. Two, querying the federal government and the laws of the United States. Three, making Bush tax cuts for the rich permanent. Four, getting anarchy started in the Middle East. Five, forming bad diplomatic relations with Russia and Germany. Six, running the money printing presses copiously without causing hyperinflation. Seven, hiding inflation. Eight, killing the date expired, ten years Osama bin Laden. Nine, building more public debt in one term than President G.W. Bush did in two. And to be fair, he didn't make the economic mess. He inherited it. It is the last policy that is remarkable and a cause for wonder. It seems as if a new age of economics has arrived long after Nixon took the U.S. off the gold standard. The Federal Reserve can just issue more money to buy U.S. bonds and fund the cost of government and make zero-interest loans to large banks 
free money effectively so the rich can buy up global business opportunities. There must be some unintended consequences for that. I just can't say what it is. Renewal with alternative infrastructure revised, 20, December 2016. Instead of replacing horse infrastructure with more horse infrastructure, ancient cars supporting politicians renewed infrastructure for cars. Instead of renewing car infrastructure, it's time to move on to something better, maybe electromagnetic platforms. Politicians often talk about infrastructure renewal in their campaign rhetoric. They say that the national infrastructure is in decay and need of repairs. It is true that many of the vast number of Herbert Hoover era public works are somewhat aged in the 1930s, and that water pipes and electrical systems may be a venerable status, while the Eisenhower interstate system, 1950s, 60s, was founded more than a half a century ago. Even so, the infrastructure most in need of renewal or replacement is the ideas the politicians have about national infrastructure renewal. Politicians generally want to just throw money at somewhat creaky systems and renew it as if it were a Model T that needed rusty fender and spring replacements. Instead, they should be thinking about new transportation forms that don't need ancient infrastructure paradigms at all. Infrastructure is a consequence of past economic development. New infrastructure should replace old infrastructure that supports new economic development and technologies. It would be possible to produce much more national electricity of the present grid with hydrogen fuel cells in the home and neighborhood. And it would be possible to replace major interstate freeway bridges uh, without bridges at all, just uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, repulsion uh, paradigms such as wire to lift uh, electromagnetic vehicles over, over waterways. No bridges whatsoever. It would also be possible to relocate much manufacturing to the United States with 3D printers of somewhat industrial scale. What would be useful to stimulate development of new ideas would be education and coordination of small teams of materials designers able to encode patentable ideas and materials and electro and computer coded designs. Designers able to encode the product material design and digitalize data code ready for printing painting. Printing. Ideas made in America could be produced in America and around the world without need for material import or export, patents should be valid just seven years with royalties to inventors after that from anyone manufacturing the item of a few percent in order to stimulate progress. With new electrical and material production infrastructure, it would also be useful to generate new ideas for transportation infrastructure that aren't based upon concrete or asphalt highways and fossil fuel internal combustion platform networks, faster, cheaper, electromagnetic, linear Accelerator platforms under and above ground could let existing roads be torn up and made into new wildlife corridor infrastructure for bioethical continuity. Sewage infrastructure might be replaced with some sort of particle beam disintegrator facilities of sludge or microwave or heat incineration of biowaste and newer infrastructure reducing the requirement for extensive wet transport piss and poop. It is perhaps only one of the most endangered national infrastructures, water, that would require not only renewal of existing infrastructures, but increased protection extending to renewal of natural watershed infrastructure as well as water storage and transport infrastructure above and below ground. It would be desirable if politicians contemplating national infrastructure renewal considered ecological economic upgrades as well, if they could get a grasp of what ecological economics are, academically speaking. As it is, some of the few politicians considering the renewal of democracy infrastructure with the reduction of the corrupt vast divide between the average annual earnings of the rich and poor may talk about investing in infrastructure renewal to create jobs what they really mean is to throw hundreds of billions down into the money pit of ancient infrastructure and economic and ancient economic practices that today tend to support globalism more than American national economic interests. With the presidential primary election campaign a year ahead, well, it's several months past now, the presidential uh, campaign, one must wonder if either major party has anyone with good ideas or any sort of technical economic competence planning to run. Maybe Republicans want another Ronald Reagan. Well, I'll skip through this. Democrats seem rather daft and interested mainly in homosexuality, drugs, and illegal amnesty for aliens to get more cheap labor and votes. Of course, President Obama did consistently stimulate Syrian conflict with demand to lawfully elect a president quit, and that gave the green light to the rise of ISIS. So maybe 
they can accomplish things other than giving zero interest loans to Wall Street. Chess Patterns Recognition Miscellaneous 20 December 2016. A paradigm for patterns is formed with fuzzy logic. Beginning players moving toward intermediate see numerous patterns that are known as openings that repeat. Then there is a pattern of the scholars made, people that use positional play or advanced pattern to A5, hoping to use it for that dirty accomplice with the queen for a mate eventually. Patterns are simply a recognized recurrent form, or alternatively a non-recurrent form, as unique as a snowflake, yet within a generalized recurrent context. Defining the color red, for example, was something that Bertrand Russell tried in his essays in Metaphysics. Yet epistemological issues and subjectivity developed later in the 20th century brought awareness to the difficulties in assigning particular meanings to words inflexibly, such as one might experience with Platonic forms or Platonic realism. Kripke and Quine developed slightly different ideas about names and necessity, Neoplatonism versus nominalism regarding words. With Kripke arguing pro-Neoplatonism, where meanings assigned to words had at least a minimum of lasting meaning, while Quine was on a nominalist side, in that paradigm words have used meanings that can be lost over time. I guess a fair example is politics. One party says night is day, right is wrong, and good is evil, while the other side differs, taking alternative viewpoints on the same issues. Red, for example, could mean green in one context or cotton candy in another, a loyal American in one paradigm or a communist in another. Quine thus argues for word ontologies or lexicons with given meanings that cannot easily be translated into other ontologies or at all actually. Ontologies may, of course, be shared as in a multidimensional Venn diagram, share common elements, though not all with a universe of three ring, three ring paradigms. <coughs> I agree that 100,000 patterns is quite a few to learn, yet it is possible that one need only learn larger patterns, not all the specific branches or modifications within a larger pattern, uh, chess patterns. I would think that it's comparable to being a general historian wherein one learns something about everywhere and tries to fill in the details so far as possible about Russian history. For example, Chinese history, U.S. history, Latin American, etc., without knowing the name of every tiny river and stream in Italy or Siberia, the Abdalina, the Artesk, the Po. It is possible to associate power and function with patterns as well as shape configurations. So forth rivers, for example, have pattern shapes, yet also have a force of water flowing downhill and eroding earth. It is likely that chess has such variegated qualitative paradigms for patterns too. I'm not sure of those. I've only been learning chess sporadically the past five years. The internet speed varies in the public sector, although there are recognizable patterns of peak use and slow speed, compelling losses in blitz chess. Personally, I think chess has no more to do with philosophy than auto mechanics or dentistry. One could play chess for a lifetime and never become literate in the process. It seems to be uh, just a very enjoyable game that people can start learning whenever. Chess is a good way to stave off mental inactivity for the elderly, though. Alzheimer's seems to develop in people that don't read much. Chess is perhaps something like reading gives the, brain, gives the brains a workout. Learning uh, 100,000 patterns doesn't seem too challenging if one learns them as well as facts for a college exam where after they are forgotten and left to the subconscious. One may not learn those facts, wrote, yet one still has a good idea of the lay of the chessboard, uh, chess, uh, the lay of the land. Most things learned end up in the subconscious, obviously, where from they are summoned to consciousness intentionally or incidentally after some stimuli or need upon a time. If one were to look at 100,000 chess pattern flashcards, maybe maybe a different 1,000 a day for 100 days, they would exist in the subconscious. The more often one viewed patterns, the easier would they appear in intentional memory recovery. Phase space and Hilbert space maximum possible configurations of energy mass quantity inclusively of the mathematically minded observer can present a large number of possible patterns. Pragmatism counts in the use value of real steady state quantum fields such as the Higgs field, whereas chess players probably are located, relatively speaking. Socrates said that he knew nothing. Epistemology leads one to the lack of certainty about everything, eventually, except for Christians, of course, as Paul noted. They know that Jesus is Lord and he crucified. Evolving AI Expert Systems, 20 December 2016. The power of computer expert systems 
with specialized artificial intelligence to find a place in the human social environment is rather remarkable with an earbud link to wristband semi supercomputer what president would ever need to fall fail to know what nations are on France's borders France's borders the military value for soldiers and an expert system with AI that has every book and field manual map and James data and tactical technique ever used in a military setting able to evaluate likely enemy locations and so forth integrated with satellite imaging tech and drone data, even able to coordinate information with other soldiers, is obvious. Probably the military will lead in that sort of thing before some politicians realize that building a lab on the moon, low-cost housing, securing borders, restoring the national ecosphere are better uses for expert systems. Applications for expert systems able to adapt to the real-world environment and serve as an observing advisor probably have quite a future. It may be through such networking of AI systems that the authoritarian computer evolves or appears to shut down human freedom. Gaming the ability of people to be free and discovering ways to cut that down might be well uh, a well-suited algorithm for a few network rogue systems perhaps developing from individuals searching in theory for such vulnerabilities. And that was all for this